This presentation will demonstrate the appropriate technique for the fixation of a transverse mandibular symphysis fracture with compression osteosynthesis using a straight 2.4 LC DCP. This fixation technique uses stabilization by compression, which relies on the bony buttressing of the fracture to help stability. It's a technique that provides a functionally stable fixation. The objectives of the exercise are to understand the importance of correct occlusion and anatomical reduction to reproduce the original shape of the mandible before fracture fixation is begun, the principles of compression and overbending, and the right technique for applying the 2.4 LC DCP. Here is the clinical situation. Pre-operative radiographs are needed in two planes, usually an OPT and a PA mandible. CT scans may also be used. The standard approach for fractures of the symphysial region is intraoral. The instruments needed are the bending pliers with nose or the bending irons, the holding forceps with ball tip, the 1.8 millimeter drill bit, the 2.4 LC DCP drill guide, the depth gauge, and the 2.4 cruciform screwdriver with holding sleeve. Before open reduction and fixation in the dentate patient, the correct occlusion must be re-established. For this exercise, Ernst ligatures and a bridal wire have been selected. However, it should be noted that many surgeons prefer MMF with arch bars because of the increased stability. Before the Ernst ligatures are closed, the bridal wire is applied. A bridal wire is necessary to avoid the formation of a gap between the teeth adjacent to the fracture line. The Ernst ligatures are now closed. The four-hole 2.4 LC DCP plate is positioned on the mandible, centrally over the fracture line just below the tooth roots. The plate is contoured to the mandible using the bending pliers. The bending irons can also be used. Overbending is necessary. It helps to close the lingual gap and prevent condylar displacement. If necessary, the plate holding forceps is used to secure the plate. The eccentric and neutral pre-drilling is carried out with the 2.4 LC DCP drill guide. To drill eccentrically, the arrow on the yellow end of the drill guide must point towards the fracture. To drill in the neutral position, the green end of the drill guide must be used. The drill guide for eccentric drilling is used in one plate hole on each side of the fracture. The arrow must point towards the fracture. A bicortical hole is drilled using a 1.8 millimeter drill bit. Although the hole does not have to be drilled at 90 degrees to the bone, it should not enter the fracture, and it should not be angled in such a way that it interferes with the adjacent screws. This is the eccentric position of the drill hole in relation to the plate hole. The screw length is measured using the depth gauge. The hook must engage the far cortex.
The 2.4 mm screw of appropriate length is inserted but not fully tightened. With the eccentric drill guide, a hole is drilled on the opposite side of the fracture. The forceps is removed, and the drill guide is used to position the plate to maintain the eccentric screw position on the opposite side. The 1.8 mm hole is drilled. Once again, the eccentricity must be confirmed. The depth is measured. The appropriate length 2.4 mm screw is inserted. Tightening the two screws alternately produces compression across the fracture. The gap is fully closed. The remaining screws must be inserted in the neutral position using the green neutral end of the drill guide. The screws need to engage both cortices and should protrude slightly beyond the inner surface of the mandible. The fixation is now complete. The Ernst ligatures and the bridle wire are removed. This exercise has shown the importance of correct occlusion and anatomical reduction to reproduce the original shape of the mandible before fracture fixation is begun, the principles of compression and overbending, and the correct technique for applying the 2.4 LC DCP.